In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these technologically styled letters that look like they're made of circuits using nothing but strokes and shapes in Inkscape. So I'll come over here into a new document and I'll get started. The first thing I want to do is grab the rectangle tool and click and drag on the canvas to draw a rectangle. I want to hold my control key while I do that so we have a perfectly symmetrical square like that. Then I'm going to remove the fill color from that rectangle by clicking this red X down here in the bottom left corner. And I want to apply a black stroke to this object by holding the shift key and clicking on the black swatch down here in my color palette. And now we have a square with a black outline. So let's come over here to the selection tool. Come up here to the tool settings menu uh, where this icon that says when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion. Let's turn that off for this tutorial. And now let's change the size of the stroke here. So I'm going to open up the fill and stroke menu by going to object and selecting fill and stroke. And from this menu, I'll come over here to the stroke style tab and I want to make sure the stroke width is five pixels. So mine's already set to five pixels. If yours isn't, just manually type that in and change the units of measurement to pixels here. And now I want to make this square 100 by 100 pixels. So I'll come up here to the toolbar where we have the width and the height. I'm going to turn on this lock icon between the two of them to make sure that we're locking the proportions as we scale. And I'm going to change this to 100 and press enter. And now we have a 100 by 100 rectangle uh, with a five pixel stroke. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. And I'm going to add 25 pixels to each dimension. So this one will be 125 pixels. So I'll write in 125 and press enter. And then I'll do this one more time. I'll right click this, go to duplicate, and I'll make this one 150. So I'll write in 150 and press enter. And there we go. And now I'm going to select all three of these and I just want to center them up vertically and horizontally. So I'll open up the alignment menu by going to object and selecting align and distribute. And from this menu, I want to choose last selected from this drop down and I'll center them up vertically and horizontally just like that. So with all of these objects selected, let's go to path and select object to path. So that now these are no longer rectangles. These are pure vector paths. And I'm going to grab my edit paths by nodes tool and I'm going to click and drag over these nodes over here on the right hand side to select them. Let me try that again. If you're using Mac, sometimes it's a difficult to select these nodes. There we go. I was able to select those nodes. Now I'm going to come up here to the tool settings menu where it says add corners live path effect. I'm going to enable that. And when I do that, you're going to see these round knots that appear next to the nodes. And I'm going to select the nodes again. And I'm going to grab this white node right here and just bring this in like that until it snaps. I want this. I want it to snap right in the center there. Before you do that, though, let me back up a little bit. Turn on your snapping menu up here by clicking on this magnet icon in the top right corner and then do that again. So let me. Uh, let me do that again now that I have snapping enabled. And I want to snap them together just like that. You'll see that red line appear there in the middle. I'm going to do the same thing with these other nodes over here. I'm going to snap them together so we have nice rounded edges like that. And once we do that, we can finalize this by going to path and selecting object to path. Now with all, with all of these objects still selected, I'm going to select over all of these nodes right here and I want to break all of them up. So I'll come over here to the tool settings menu and I'm looking for the option that says break path at selected nodes. And when I click on that, it's going to break them all up into separate nodes. And now we want to break them up into separate objects. So we'll go to path and select break apart and click off of the, the graphic. Let's grab the selection tool and click off of it to deselect everything. And you can see we now have individual pieces of this entire element here. And if I select all of these, I can come over here to my fill and stroke menu. I could bring down the opacity roughly in half. And uh, just so you can see where the start and end point is of each of these lines, they all overlap and underlap with each other. And the point of doing this is that we now have these individual elements that we can use to construct virtually any letter that we'd like. So let me put that back and I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to right click them and go to duplicate and move the duplicate copy off to the side, just in case I want another copy to work with if I want to create other letters. And I'm going to use these objects right here to, cr to uh, create the letter A. So let me select all of them. I'm going to rotate them around by clicking on the objects, and then I'm going to get those rotation handles. And with the rotation handles enabled, I'm going to hold the control key and just roll it around until it's flat like that. And I'm going to create a letter A out of this right here. I'll come back over here to show you what I mean. This letter A is what we're going to create. So let me come back into Inkscape. Let me click off of it to deselect everything. I'm going to click and drag over these three pieces right here, and I'm just going to bring them up and I'm going to snap them up here. I want this object to snap 
to this part of the, uh, the starting point of that curve right there. So I'll snap that in there. And now I want, I want to make these lines right here all the same height. So I want to take these lines and bring them down so that they're the same height as these ones. With snapping enabled, we should be able to grab the nodes tool and select the node and then just hold control and bring it straight down and it may snap or we may have to create a guide for that. So it didn't snap to the bottom there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a guide. Uh, you should have a ruler on your canvas up here. If you don't have a ruler, uh, as is the case on my screen, you can activate it by pressing Control R on your keyboard, or if you're using Mac, it would be Command R. And once we have that ruler, we can click and drag a guide down here. And I'm gonna snap that guide to the bottom of this path right here. And now I could take these paths and snap them down to the bottom of the guide. And I'm holding control while I do this to lock the line onto the vertical axis. If I'm not holding control, it's gonna wobble around like that. Holding control will enable you to lock it onto that axis. So I'll come over here and do the same thing. I'm gonna snap these lines as well. And then I'm gonna zoom back out. And I'm gonna adjust these lines here. So let me select this line in the middle and I'm gonna take this node and bring this in right here. And I'm holding control while I do that to lock it onto the horizontal axis. I'm gonna bring that line right there and I'll do the same thing over here on this side. I'm just gonna bring these lines in like that. And then I wanna take this line right here and take this node and just snap it down here. And I'll do the same thing over here on this side. I'll snap this line onto this node and we end up with this outcome right here. So I'm gonna get rid of the guide now. I'm gonna make the guide invisible by holding shift and pressing the vert vertical bar key on the keyboard. And I'm gonna get rid of the ruler as well. I'm gonna press Command R or Control R again to get rid of that. And what we have here is we have all of these individual lines. For each segment here, we want it to be one continuous path. So for this segment here, this is not a continuous path. This is broken up into three pieces. To make this a continuous path, I'm gonna select all of the objects by holding Shift and clicking on each of them. And then I'll come over here to my Nodes tool and I wanna select all of these nodes. I'm gonna hold Shift while I'm doing that, select all of the nodes. And with them all selected, I'm gonna come up here to the tool settings menu where it says join selected nodes and click on that. And you, can, you should see that those overlapping segments go away. We now have uh, combined the nodes together. So let me grab my selection tool. If you notice, we have a little bit of an extra piece that got left out here. This is kind of like a, I guess you could consider it a mathematical error with working with vectors. It's really not supposed to be there, but it happens sometimes. Let me put that back. If you have this on your screen, you could just select it and then press delete on your keyboard to get rid of it. And now we're gonna do the same thing to the rest of these paths. We want this to be one continuous path as well. So I'm gonna select each of these. I'll come over here to my nodes tool. I'll select each of these nodes one by one. I wanna make sure they're all selected. I'm gonna hold shift while I do that to make sure they're all selected and I'll unify those together as well. And now I will do the same thing to this line that runs in the middle. So I'm gonna hold shift and select each of these lines and then I'll click and drag over each of these nodes while holding shift to select all of them. And once I do that, I'll merge them together as well. Now that's one continuous path. And then finally, I'll do that for this path as well. So I'm gonna select each of these, hold shift and click and drag over each, and then combine them together. And there we go. Now we have continuous paths for each segment of this letter. So at this point in the tutorial, we're gonna start subtracting areas of these lines and adding the circles to the ends of them to really complete this look here. So let me come back into here and we'll get started on this. Uh, I think at this point we can bring the opacity of these objects back up. Let me select all of them and bring the opacity back up to 100%. And I'm gonna start off with this segment in the center here. I'm gonna select that and grab my nodes tool. And I wanna add a couple of nodes in an area where I'd like to subtract part of the line. So I'm gonna double click right here to add a new node. And let's say I wanna subtract the area or remove the line segment between these two nodes right here. I could select both of those nodes and I can come up here to the tool settings menu and select this option that says delete, select, delete segment between two non endpoint nodes and click on that and that line has been eliminated. So I'm gonna eliminate another part of this line down here. I'm gonna double click to add a new node right here and then double click to add a node right here and then I'll select both of those and I'll sub also uh, subtract that segment as well. And now what we can do is we can put the circles at the tips of those lines by coming over here to the stroke style tab. And if you notice, we have these three drop downs for markers. I'm gonna choose this drop down over here on the left first. I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna choose this rounded marker right here. And I wanna make the size of that 0.4. So by default, it's 
1.0. I'm going to remove that and type in 0.4 and press enter. And I'm going to close out of that. And I want to apply the same type of marker to the end point. So I'm going to click on this drop down. And instead of choosing circle again and manually typing in that size, we could just use the most recently applied marker. So I'm going to choose this one right up here in the top of this list. And now we have it applied there as well. So the problem at this point is that we have the circles at the start point and the end point, but we don't have them on these middle points here. So to fix that, I'm just going to break this apart. I'll come up here and go to path and I'll select break apart. And now these are separate segments that have the circles at the start point and the end point of each line. So now let's do the same thing down here with this other segment. This time I'm going to put the line breaks on the opposite side. So instead of putting the line break right here where it looks kind of symmetrical, I'm going to make it look a little, little more whimsical than that. So I'll put it over here. I'm going to grab my nodes tool. I'll double click to add a point right here. And then I'll add another point right here. And then I'm going to select those and delete the segment between them. And then I'll put another one down here. I'll double click this one and then put another one right there. And I'll delete that segment out of there. And now we can just go to our markers drop down and choose our previously used marker for each the uh, for both the start and the end point. And now we can break this apart by going to path and selecting break apart. And there we go. That segment is done. Now, when I'm creating these letters, what I like to do is I like to leave the center line in place. I don't like to break them apart and add those nodes on there because then it starts to look less like a letter. I've noticed that leaving that line like it is helps preserve its appearance as a letter, especially if you zoom out more. So let me zoom back in. And finally, I'll do this outer line here. So for this outer line, I'm going to put the line breaks at opposite sides of this one here in the center. So instead of putting the line break right here, I'll put it over here. So let me go back to my nodes tool. I'll click, double click to add a node where I want the line breaks to be. Select both of them. Delete the segment. And then I'll come down here and do the same thing. I'll maybe choose this part right here, and then I'll just delete the segment between these two nodes. Let me try that again. And then I'll delete that out of there. And again, once again, we can just choose the same markers for the start and end point. And then break it apart by going to path and selecting break apart. And what I like to do is for this center line here, I'm just going to grab my nodes tool and I'm going to select these two nodes. And I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. Personally, I think this just looks a little better when this center line descends down a little further than those other two lines right there. And as you can see, we're finished with the letter. Now, if you want to change the color and style of your letter, you could just select over all of it and change the stroke color. So I'll come over here to the stroke paint tab and I'll choose a new color for my stroke that I've created. And there we go. Now we have a blue sort of line like that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is because we have this setting disabled, if you go to scale this object up like that, the lines are going to appear thinner. And the same thing if you scale it down. If you scale it down, the lines are going to appear thicker like that. If you want to preserve the object so that it scales, the line, the line weight stays the same regardless of how much you scale it. Just enable the setting again, and now you'll be able to scale your object however you'd like without losing any of those proportions. And now you can repeat that process using these objects over here. You could take these lines and use them to create every other letter of the alphabet. And I'll put a quick little graphic up on the screen here just to show you how I went about creating all of the individual letters of the alphabet if you want to use that for inspiration. And that should do it for this tutorial. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.